Hi, my name is Merlin. I'm a senior systems engineer for Tintry in Western Canada, and today I'm going to show you how you configure a Tintry VM store from NetNew. So one of the first things you want to do is take a look at the reference guide that comes with the Tintry. And on page 6, there's some information that you're going to have to track down for the initial configuration. So you're going to want to get an IP for the administration interface, an IP for the data interface, and then also uh, your information for vCenter, and create a service account for um, the VM store. A read-only um, account will work, um, but you, know, you can create any kind of account you'd like there as long as it has the read-only privileges. There's also some other information on page 7 that you need to track down um, for further configuration, so SMTP information, uh, contact information, NTP server, DNS, and uh, location. Um, you'll also want to get your serial number off of the back of the system because we're going to need that to log in. So getting started here, we're going to connect to the console uh, port, the VGA and USB on the back of the primary controller, which is the top controller um, on the array. And when you connect to it, you're going to see a login here. So we're going to uh, log in with the username admin. And then the password is the serial number, including dashes, that we pulled off the back of the array. And so the very first time you log in, it's going to walk you through configuring the administration interface for the Tintry. So this is how we're going to log in and finish the setup. So we'll put in our administrative IP information. And then we're going to give it its um, FQDN name, so its host name. So now it's going to check the connectivity for that IP address, and in just a few moments here, it should tell us that it's ready and we'll be able to log into it uh, through that IP address. All right, so we're in action here. So we can get rid of this console session, and we can bring up our Internet Explorer, our, our Firefox, or Chrome, and we can hit that administrative IP address that we just set up. And we're going to say we understand the risks to connect to this. And again, we're going to log in with that admin account, and we're going to use the serial number one more time. Now this is going to walk us through the initial setup wizard. So this is where we're going to set up our NFS data IP, our vCenter information, and all the other information that the Tintry needs to get its initial configuration up. So let's set the data IP. And we don't need a gateway, but I do need a VLAN. And we'll put in our vCenter information. And because I don't have an SMTP environment um, in, in my test lab here, we're just going to fake this. So uh, it will give us an error initially when we set this up. for my DNS here, for the NTP, put in our DNS information, So 
we'll put in our contact information for the array, and then we'll create a new password for the array. Then we're going to say set up my VM store. So we're logging into the Tintree for the first time here and it pops up and it shows you our dashboard. But we haven't added anything to um, the system yet. One of the first things that I need to do before actually adding this to vCenter is to turn on LACP because I've enabled the ports for the data on the NFS for an, uh, LACP. So if I go down here into settings and go and say I want LACP enabled for the data network. So once this is enabled, we can go into vCenter and then we can then add um, the Tintry data store to our vCenter environment. We've got our settings saved there, so now I can open up my vCenter session. I can go here and say I want to add a data store, and we'll add it to my first host. We're going to pick NFS, and our server is going to be our data IP of the Tintree. And the folder is going to be um, slash Tintree. And let's name this to uh, Tintree. NFS01. That should show up there, and we'll add it to our other host. And we'll give it the same name. Now I've fully configured the Tintree for my virtual environment. So now I can go into my VMs and I can move over one of my VMs over to the Tintree side. So let's migrate this guy. So one of the things while we're waiting for that virtual machine to load here is we can um, add our AD integration. So I can go through here and say I want to add the protocol active directory. I'll put in the information for my uh, domain. I can use that Tintree account that we used for vCenter. Click on save here. That should get our Tintree joined to the active directory. And once we've configured that, now we can go through here and we can set up uh, roles-based access. We can go into the management access and we can add some groups in here. I can go through and it's going to populate all the groups here that we've got in Active Directory. I say, you know what, I want my VM admins to have super admin access. And then let's add our service desk onto here. So I want our service desk people to be able to have read-only access. Once I save this, I actually go through here and we can log out of this Tintree session that we've got going on. And I can log back in with my Active Directory account. So we're logged in with the Active Directory account, and we can take a look here and see how our virtual machine copy is going. And we're almost done. All right, so our virtual machine's moved over there, so now we can go ahead and let's power that guy up. So we should be able to see that if I refresh over here,
and we're going to have a VM on the system. And so after we've turned that virtual machine on, we can see that it's running, we've moved it over, and on the administration side, we can see that it's shown up here. And uh, we can go and take a look in the virtual machine, so we can see that it's populated on the virtual machine side, and uh, we're able to take a look at that system. And that is the basic initial configuration of a Tintree VM store. Thank you.